Hi everybody, it is Prosperity Monday. I am G1 Writer with G1 Insights. And on Prosperity Monday, I tend to like to talk about ways that we can better ourselves, um, uplift ourselves, make more money, um, maybe generate more income or more wealth. So that is what Prosperity Monday is all about. Okay, so today I'm going to give you about just a few tips, maybe about three to five tips on different ways that you can increase your finances for the year of 2019 going into 2020, of course. Okay, so these are proven methods that um, actually have been around for a while that most people either tend to ignore or they may and may not have access to it. And so basically, these are just a few things to show you how you can actually increase your money by either being your own boss, working from home, or working on the road, whatever. It's just simply about living in prosperity and being your own independent person, okay? So the first thing on my list is Airbnb, okay? Airbnb has been proven um, to be one of the biggest travel apps okay so airbnb is a travel app where people can basically make money renting out their space okay whether it's their office their home their apartment it's kind of like um having a temporary roommate basically you basically will allow someone to either come into your office space or your home space just to rent it for whether it's a few days a few weeks or maybe a few months and of course it, the contract is always between you and whoever you are renting from However, you can actually use Airbnb as a perfect way to make money if you are retired, okay, if you are done with school and maybe you have a nice place and maybe it's too expensive and you're having a hard time finding employment, this can be one way you can actually generate income, okay? And so in 2017, it is proven, okay, that over 100 million trips were booked through airbnb okay and and i'm talking like all over the world like over in one over 190 countries i believe okay so i'm sorry guys i'm just going through my notes so i won't leave out anything important okay so how does airbnb work all you need is a spare room okay that's it simple right like i said either an apartment or house um however small or big it doesn't really matter it basically goes off of what you need you can set your own prices um you know a lot of people like to do mb airbnb <laughs> um for people that do travel where instead of spending a lot of money on hotels they will basically can come to you in hopes of getting something for a lot cheaper for a, maybe a shorter time or a longer time Okay, if you do not have an extra room or don't own a home, there are still options, okay? You can actually rent out your place while you are traveling and not at home. So say if you are the one that is traveling, you can actually have someone there renting out your space while you won't be home so if you know that you will be gone for about two or three months and you know that you're going to need to be able to pay bills and um you're going to need to be able to keep money coming in somehow that is one way that you can do it you can still rent out your place while you are traveling or maybe not or maybe you just won't be at home okay you can also convert one of your rooms into an extra bedroom okay however there are some things here where it says to ask your landlord like if you have an apartment or if you're renting to own you may want to reach out to the person who actually is in charge of that apartment or that house um and just simply get permission to use um to basically use airbnb okay um maybe you can i know some people like to get their landlords cuts you know maybe you can give them a cut um, on whatever percentage you make. So if you make a hundred dollars, you can agree to give them maybe forty dollars of that, right? Just for an example, right? Um, so you can also buy a property to use for Airbnb. So maybe you are 
already financially set, but you just want some extra residual income, you can actually look into be it Airbnb. <laughs> I hate that words. Okay. So you can actually look through Airbnb and actually purchase a property and do it that way as well. And basically be able to calculate all of your money that you make. Okay. Um, you can either find a room or find a friend okay, who has a room and make a deal with them. So again, you also have some options, okay? You can actually be your own independent person. If you know that there are people, basically it's kind of like being a broker without really having like a real estate license because with Airbnb, you don't really need those things. So say if you know a friend who has a house, um, they need space, right? They need some, I mean, they are renting a space and they need someone to book a room or whatever, they can actually pay you to do the research for them. And you can actually have as many clients as you want to help. You know, you know several people that need to rent out a, that need a room or that need a space to live while they are traveling. You can actually make a lot of money doing that, especially depending on how many clients you have. Um, now, when it comes to making money with Airbnb, some people can cover their mortgage payments um, with Airbnb, okay? Others are actually running a full-time business with multiple properties, which is exactly what I was just talking about. So you can have like a wide range of ways that you can use Airbnb, okay? Um, but there's no actual limit to how much you can earn. You know, again, it all depends on how serious you are with it and um, how serious you wanna take it. In general, your location is important as well. So your location is important, the type of space that you want to rent or maybe inquiring about, right? All of that is important, okay? So you may want to think about your location and type of space that you do have, um, and that will also determine your income. So a luxury condo in Las Vegas will probably earn a lot more than maybe a one-bedroom house in a small town, okay, because it's Vegas, right? So, um, again, you might want to do some research and see um, how much rooms are going for in your area. And maybe you can kind of say, hey, that room is $500. I can offer you mine for $300. You know, so it's really a lot of negotiation there. And, again, you can have contracts and build it up the way you want, okay? So, there are a few variables that would determine your income, though, okay? Your nightly price. You might want to set a nightly price, okay? Your vacancy rate, okay? How many nights will you be booked or um, maybe your place, okay? How many guests you can accommodate? All of these things matter, okay? Um, the size of the home, the amenities, the things that people can use. Like, do you have a wash and dryer? Do you have a workout? Do you have workout equipment in your home? Do you have access? Um, do they have access to transportation and things like that? Like, that may be things that you may want to list, especially if you are thinking about doing business through Airbnb, okay? Consider those things. And remember, competition is huge out there. There, like I said, is in over 190 countries, so there are lots and lots of competition. So, <laughs> you got to make sure that your page stands out, okay? All you have to do is... Um, also, too, let me point this out, automation, yes, automation is also very important. If you want it to be at 100% passive, there will be more expenses, okay? How do you get started? Glad you asked. Okay, so with Airbnb, you basically are simple. You just create an account like you would do with any other uh, social network or website out there. You sign up, you put your email in. Um, Airbnb will definitely walk you through the process, like give you a tour of their website and all the things that you can do and all the options that is available to you. Um, you can actually start process pricing your listing um, and start actually receiving bookings the same day if you want. There also will be a good tip to also create like a welcome message for people that are looking at your page, kind of like a bio, you know, let people know who you are and exactly what you are seeking. Tell them a little bit about yourself, not too much, you don't want to scare people away, right, but you want to tell them just enough to be comfortable enough to just book through you, okay? Um, you can also set things up like self-check-in, cleaning services, um, again, the more passive you are, the more income is, you know. So the pros of Airbnb, potential for higher earnings can be almost entirely outsourced 
I am in set up for passive income can be scaled and turned into a business, which is again, that's optional. If you want to continue to do it all the time. Um, what else? What else? So you can actually make a lot more than having long-term tenants. So you know how some people, um, they want to rent a space for about six months or a year, right? If you have consistently like a lot of people booking you through like uh, maybe like four clients in a month's time, you can probably make over $1,000 having multiple um, clients at a time, okay? Um, cons of Airbnb. Um, it does take a lot of effort and time to earn good reviews. So, again, with that bio, make sure that you are showing a lot of personality that you um, are engaging with others, okay? Also, there can be, when it comes to cons of Airbnb, there can be some challenges if you don't own the home. So, for example, you want to kind of be discreet about it, get permission, be real about it. Like, listen, I'm a little low on funds. I'm having a hard time getting a job. If you will allow me to rent out my space, I will cut you a cut, you know. And depending on your landlord, you know, they might be cool with it. They might say no, you know. But listen, just tell them straight up, I want to go into business for myself. I find that as, as long as you're honest, it's does help okay um because the worst that you don't want to happen is that you actually do allow these people it's 11 11 hey yay so these people can actually come stay with you and then your landlord comes to find out that they are there they're using their space especially if you don't even pay utilities if you're in one of those type of environments yeah they're definitely going to want their cuts or they're probably going to end up suing you so you want to be very careful about that um, income potential is very different for everyone. Again, it's all about the location, the number of rooms, and etc. Right? So, um, that's the first thing, guys. So, the next favorite way that I found really interesting for 2019 is Uber and Lyft, um, Uber Eats. There's another one out there, um, full, not full porn. What's <laughs> it's all these different ways that you can make money through Uber, Lyft, Uber Eats. These things, you can either have a car, you can have a bike. Not with Uber, not Uber and Lyft, you can't have a bike. But you definitely need a car, okay? So let's look into this. So with Uber, if you are interested in doing Uber, but you just, maybe you Googled it and still haven't found, like, some answers, right? Um, as an Uber partner, you are in business for yourself, just like lit at the end of the quarter at the end of the year or the tax season right they will give you a 1099 okay so yes you are in business for yourself so when you are going to file taxes okay make sure especially if you spent at least 10 months doing Uber or Lyft, make sure you ask them. If they have not sent you that 1099, make sure that you request it or ask for it. So that way, when you file taxes, you can, even if you do owe the IRS, you will still be able to claim a refund, okay? So it is really, really important that you guys understand that first, okay? Because a lot of people do Uber and Lyft, but they do not use a 1099 because they are afraid that the IRS is going to take all of their money, and that is not totally the truth. You actually get a lot more money back to being an independent business owner than you will do as a regular employee because when you're a regular employee they tax you crazy okay so that is the first thing I just wanted to get that out the way. So again, as an Uber partner, you can make money by giving people rides. Simple, right? You have a car. It has to be a much more modern day car. So um, this is how they work. So basically you sign up Kind of like you would do a job, right? You sign up. Um, if you meet all the requirements, okay? I'm going to get into that. But if you meet all the requirements, they will hire you. And you will be a partner with Uber. I also recommend that you also take some time and try to invest in their stock. Because it will be going live soon, okay? So between Uber and Lyft, those are two lucrative companies that are going to go public. Um, and you might... You know, if you are partnering up with them in any type of way, whether it's Uber Eats or driving or giving people rides with the lift, those are two lucrative companies where you may want to, while you are riding with them and <laughs> getting that to 99, you may also want to have a share in their company, okay? But that's another topic for another day. So... You can also get a request from them. Hop in your car, turn on the app, and you can begin receiving pickup requests from riders in your area. 
pick up and drop off actually as well they do round trips i think lyft does definitely does do the same thing lyft is my favorite but I get that a lot of people like Uber too. Depending on location, depends on the prices and how much you can make, of course, because every state is a different cost of living, okay? So to get your rider's destination, you have the option of using directions in the Uber app or any navigation app of your choice. Uh, I know that the Waze app, especially if you're going on a highway or traveling to another state doing Uber, you can definitely make a lot more money if you do this the right way, you use all the resources for you, you can definitely make a lot of money, okay? Once you end the trip with the person, right, the trip is over, you can actually rate your rider. And depending on, you know, what rate you give them, you can always use them. So this person um, normally spends $30 going, $30 coming back. That's a lot of money for you in tips and handy as well that you can make just from that one person. So imagine if you had five of those people a day, I mean, your money will initially get there so again it's all about location and it's all about um how soon and fast you are out there too like if you are constantly like accepting requests you can make a lot of money i mean accepting yeah accepting rise and customers like you can actually make a lot of money but if you're picky and you're like uh nope i'm not gonna go to um, this particular town today, I'm going to go over here. Like, you may be missing out on, like, $200 in that area. You know, I also find that at night, a lot of Uber and Lyft drivers make a lot of money, too, because a lot of people either work overnight, they don't want to take the train, they don't want to take transit, they don't want to rely on transit. People that travel out the airport, those are also a good area to pick up people and to drop them off at. Um, also, people that like the nightlife, that go partying, those are also some great places to go to pick and drop people off at, okay? However, okay, Uber has ratings, okay? They, ratings have doubled, okay? They have a double rating system. So when the ride is over, the driver will rate the passenger, and the passenger will have the option to rate the driver. So when you are being an Uber driver, you want to make sure that you are focused, that your car smells good, that it looks good. You want to make sure that you are treating people with the utmost respect just try to remember the time when you didn't have a car and you had to catch a taxi right and that taxi driver were re very rude to you or maybe they were late right they said five minutes and they actually took about 10 minutes try to keep all those things in mind when you are considering to be an uber or lyft driver because that also determines your ratings and when you have bad ratings People will not book from you. They will not request you. Um, they will probably most likely not even want to use Uber just because of your bad service, okay? So try to keep those things in mind. And this also goes for Lyft as well, okay? You have to be at least 21 years old. Let's talk about requirements, driver requirements. You have to be at least 21 years old. You have to have at least one year of a licensed driving experience in the U.S. Three years if you are under 23 years old. You have to have a valid driver's license. License, not a permit. You need a driver's license. Use an eligible four-door vehicle required, okay? Documents will include a valid driver's license or proof of vehicle insurance, okay? And so how do you get paid? Let's talk about that. As an Uber partner, you will earn for each completed trip. Not the type of trip that you canceled out of because you got too impatient waiting and you didn't feel like sitting there at the Walmart. Like, I had that actually happen to me. Like, I had a couple of drivers who, because when I shop at Walmart, let's just say I have such a bad habit. So, I will go in Walmart and I would be there for a minute. But my thing is this. I'm tipping you. You're getting paid big bucks just sitting here because I'm going to give you money, right? So, why not just be patient? And, I mean, I get it. Not everybody is as nice and pleasant when it comes to their finances in that way. But you never know who you're going to get, okay? This person might want to tip you both ways with their credit card and in cash. You just never know. So, it's always good to just be on point and to be thankful for whatever you do get, Okay, um, how much you earn from each ride is based on several variables. Do not cancel out a ride, okay? You may also have the opportunity to earn extra with promotions in your area. So try to keep that out as well. Like, you have customers like myself, for example, because I, I use Lyft a lot. So I'm going to give you guys an example. Like, 
You have customers like me. I use lips all the time, right? So my rating is really, really amazing. Customers come to me. I mean, not customers. Drivers come to me all the time because I'm constantly investing in booking trips and going this place and that place, right? So drivers naturally love to come pick me up and scoop me up and stuff, right? So that's cool. So I don't have no issues in that area. So my whole point is I always get coupons and offers for a cheaper ride, 20% off, 30% off. Oh my God, I love it when they do 50% off. It's amazing, right? So you might want to catch a person like me that's doing 50% off. Hey, boom, boom, boom. I'm riding, I'm riding because guess what? Now that I got 50% off, that extra $5 that I would have went towards my ride is now being tipped to you. So I would definitely keep an eye out for that as well, okay? Whenever you want to earn extra money, simply open the app and wait for the request. You can drive as much as you like. If you want to do from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., that's on you. If you want to do, you know, 15 hours out, to, out of 24, that is totally up to you. Again, it, the money you earn is all through you and your ambition and your work ethic. You can drive on your own schedule, get paid up to five times per day and much more. If you link a debit card and sign up for instant pay, okay, that is a really good pro of Uber. Um, no previous professional driving experience is required. So that's a good thing, okay? Cons of Uber, some people are uncomfortable driving with strangers. So again, try to be polite, try to be open-minded, play a little music, show a little personality, ask people how are they doing when they get in your vehicle. You know, it makes people warm up a bit more. Um, you are responsible for gas and expenses. So all of that driving you doing, this is exactly why you wanna be nice to people because you want those tips. Because now you are spending money on gas and travel expenses going from one place to the next you got to make sure your tires are running good it's a lot of uh cons with that however the good thing is the constant cash flow okay so it's easy to sign up again you know um again lift is pretty much the same way okay so last but not least um i'm gonna talk about two things really i'm gonna talk about um Creating an online course, okay, like a master class, for example. Um, if you have something that you are extremely knowledgeable in, these are passive incomes, guys. And you can definitely make passive income with an e-course, okay? If you are extremely knowledgeable in something, you can actually do what I'm doing right now, just simply teaching someone, talking to someone. People will pay to tune into your course, especially if you know what you're talking about. Every day, there are millions of people using the internet for a variety of reasons, information, entertainment, work, and so on. What is a big reason people use the internet, you ask, right? To learn. People love to Google. They ask questions in their mind all the time, so they're constantly going to Google, okay? So, uh-oh. Sorry. So, some of the main topics that a lot of people do like to talk about um, are literally anything that you can ask about. Anything. Um, okay, so the great things about creating an online course are after your course is created, it can generate passive income. Constructing the course is not difficult. You may think it is, but it's really not. If you are knowledgeable with PowerPoint or Microsoft or Google Docs or anything in that area, trust me, utilize it to your advantage. Okay, I know Amazon also allows you to do online courses, okay, because they have ways that you can set up stuff and be able to write and print out and sell things, right? So that's really good as well. And I'll go deeper into that later. But also, online courses can be integrated, okay? They can be integrated into an already existing income source. So, for example, if you have a website, right, you can actually now create this online course and integrate it into your website and have people purchase that, that course through your website. So, now you just got paid double, you got paid for the integration, and now you just got paid because somebody signed up for your online course. And your online course could be about music, how to write music sheets, um, how to do your hair, you know, or how to babysit the right way, how to be a really good teacher. Whatever people want to pay for. Trust me, when somebody is really interested in something, they will purchase, okay? So don't overthink the process. And you know that you are extremely knowledgeable on something. The best thing that you can do, especially if you are a really good writer and a really good teacher, because a lot of people like to teach and talk, but they don't know how. 
They don't know how to be a good leader. So I think it's important to step up your communication skills and get that down packed. Because once you do, I mean, you don't have to be an expert in communication, but I think it's really helpful to be knowledgeable in whatever it is that you are talking about. Because believe it or not, people will have questions. They will review you and send you to the Better Business Burial if you do not know what you're talking about. Or they'll probably flag you or report you somehow. So be very, very knowledgeable in the field, okay? Um, you can choose a topic, create the course, and market the course. So you want to make sure that you are using every single social media platform to promote your online course, okay? Facebook has a tremendous way of um, allowing you to advertise. You don't have to pay any upfront money, okay? But you can advertise and just set up a day where you'll get paid. So if you know that you want to promote your online course for seven days, by the end of that seven day, Facebook will tell you, okay, you owe us about $30 or whatever it is amount that you set it to. So what I love about Facebook advertisement is that you can actually set everything according to your budget. If you can only afford to spend $3 a day, you can do that. If you want to spend $10 a day, I will tell you this. The more money you are willing to spend, guess what? The more money you can make, okay? Because what Facebook is going to do is reach out to a wide variety of people and let them know, hey, this person has an online course. Twitter does the same thing, but Twitter does um, want you to pay up front. <laughs> and Instagram and Facebook kind of go hand in hand together. So if you owe Facebook money for advertisement services, Instagram will not allow you to use that business page through their platform and advertise through their platform if you owe Facebook money. So keep that in mind, okay? You must choose a good topic. It should be something that you're somewhat fluent in, okay? You do not have to be an expert in what you're teaching, but you should be able to talk about it and explain it without an issue. Take into the account that something you're knowledgeable in, such as productivity, fitness, programming, construction, whatever. The list goes on, okay? Um, things to think into, okay, when choosing a topic. Is it evergreen, okay? Evergreen means it will always be in demand. So when you are choosing a course, a master class that you want to present, understand that if it's not something that people can benefit from, if it's not something that is in high demand that people need, like for example, if you want to teach somebody how to use uh, Microsoft or Windows 10, for example, right? You want to teach somebody how to do Windows 10, a lot of companies these days require their employees to use Windows 10. So you want to make sure that it's something that is beneficial. Somebody who is willing to learn because they really want that employment, they really want that job, they will be willing to pay you to teach them that, okay? While you are creating the course, okay, depending on what you're teaching, the way you will create the course will vary, okay? But every course will need an outline. What will the topics be in each video? What information will go into each video, okay? I know there's also an app that can also help you with this is called Big V or Big V U or something like that. I'm going to I'm going to find it and then I'll tag it at the bottom of the video for you guys, okay? Um especially for those of you that are interested in doing online courses or master classes, okay? Um budgeting, saving, the, when it comes to your finances, these are things you might have to invest in, okay? Um saving, budgeting, putting money away, investing your savings, liabilities, cars, house, other automobiles, um, assets or companies or investments, you can use this format for your course. And um, in each section, go over what will be explained in the course. Again, you want to be knowledgeable. You want to engage with your audience, okay? Have a good camera. Again, I'm going to tell you about that app. I'm going to find it. It's called Big V or Big VU, okay? It actually allows the camera to focus on you, but it have your words on one side. So while you are looking into the camera, Everything is on one side. So you're reading, and as you're reading, the camera is focused on you. So the reading is, like, right there, like how my hand is, but it's, like, focused. So nobody is missing. Like, your eyes are not there like how minds are doing today. Your eyes are not there or here or down there or anything because all the words are right there, okay? So it makes it a lot easier um, while doing your online course. It makes it a lot easier. A screen recorder. QuickTime has a screen recorder feature also, and it is installed on most captures, okay? If you're teaching something like Photoshop tutorials, um, tutorial, excuse me, you'll need a screen recorder, Okay, video editing software. That's also important. There are, again, there are a lot of free ones like Lightworks, for example. Um, a good microphone. I mean, I know it's not necessarily uh, important because most cameras or computers or phones have good cameras in them now. Um, however, a good microphone is also really important. A good lighting system is also important, okay? Marketing the course, you want to do... 
Udemy or Skillshare. Okay, write these things down, guys. It is really, really important. Um, other platforms that you can use is something called Teachable. Teachable is also important. Although you may have decided how you'll be delivering your course to your students, your work is still being purchased by being purchased, excuse me, guys, I'm really tired. So being purchased by Hustle now, okay? So keep in mind, whatever you're going to do, you got to make, you got to cover every end, okay? How much am I spending to do this? Um, is it bad? Is it good? How much money can I make from doing it? Okay, last but not least, because I have to go, I'm going to do drop shipping, okay? Drop shipping has literally become one of my favorite things of 2019 because I have made so much from doing it and i'm going to tell you all about it drop shipping has become super popular because it takes very little investment to get started you can literally start up with zero bucks zero bucks okay start up with zero bucks this business model has been around for decades but shopify and like GoDaddy or like some other good great companies out there has actually allowed you to drop ship from their company using their platform what the hell is drop shipping my right? drop shipping is a is basically selling products, okay? Selling products online, but the main factor is you don't need to hold inventory of your products. A supplier basically will hold your product, they ship it to your customers for you. That is basic drop shipping. It's really easy, it's not hard. If you guys want me to teach you how to do it, I can. Um, just email me, okay? Here's an example of how it works. A customer buys something from your store. You can go through GoDaddy if you don't have a storefront or a website. You can use GoDaddy. Shopify is a really big platform to do uh, drop shipping off of. So you definitely can use Shopify. The thing is with Shopify, they'll give you like a full, I think it's like 7 or 14 day uh, trial period. And then they want you to start paying. So, um, and I think the plans is like $29 dollars or $79 and a little bit more, right? So, um, basically, it's really cheap to get started. There's no big, big blow up about it, okay? But you don't have to, you can sell whatever product you want. Me, personally, I do a lot of ladies things like purses and makeup and hair because I'm a girl and I can relate to those things and it's easier for me to discuss with my customers. So that is what I do. I have my chakra bracelets, which I don't have one today, but I have my chakra bracelets. I also have my own personal clothing line with um, Teespring, with, which is G1 Rider, Live Your Best Life. So you guys may see my little t-shirts and leggings and hoodies and kids clothing, right? So I've done all that. And if you guys go on my website, you'll be able to see exactly what I mean, okay? Um, so for those of you that think, hey, where's her terror reading stuff? Just search it, okay? It's on my website, okay? But it's really, really easy to do drop shipping okay how do you get started what should you sell first you need to decide what you want to sell and what your theme will be mine is live your best life luxuriously right because I believe that everybody should be entitled to living their best life and being full of life and full of grace and having the best moment of their life ever right so that is my thing what is your theme going to be right the options are endless so we recommend choosing a niche that you are passionate about like how i feel about living your best life i'm passionate about that so that is why i chose it okay um, choose something that you are passionate about so that you will stick with it and will not get bored. I find it a lot easier that doing what you love makes it so much easier. And when you have a brand and you are branding yourself, your own niche and your own personality, things come out so much easier. You don't have to fabricate. You don't have to pretend to be something that you're not. It's all you. So it's all authentic. I know a few people who like colors. So they'll do like a uh, blue streak or pink pink chick or whatever like they people like to choose different colors and themes okay i don't have any particular color because i love all colors um but i did choose a actual word theme okay and like i said it's live your best life so that's something you may want to think about start brainstorming too about three to five topics that you're interested in um again i'm a girl i do love wigs and hair and makeup and nice good clothing and quality clothing and nice bags and shoes so i promote those type of things and again, it's really easy. What products will work? Once you pick a niche, you should research and sell products that are not generic. Me personally, I do not like 
to sell too much electronics because I know that the competition is endless in the universe. It's everywhere. People can go on Amazon, right, and buy something. And that's another thing, guys. You can sell on Amazon. You can sell on Wish. You can sell wherever you want. And that's the beautiful thing about getting your drop shipping thing through Shopify is that you will have access to everything. Again, pick your platform. That was the next thing I was going to talk about. Okay. Amazon FBA or Shopify plus AliExpress, Shopify, Printful, um, Teespring. Again, those are some of the things that I use. Um, I do Amazon, Shopify, Teespring. I do all that. Okay. And there's another one that I have that is not currently on my list, but I will put that in the comments below again. Okay. Shopify is one of the most popular platforms for, dro for drop shipping right now. Um, and it allows you to build your store. However, say if you say if you feel like Shopify is a little bit out of your lead, it's too expensive, then you can use other platforms like GoDaddy that also allows you to not only just have your website, but you can actually have an online store. And depending on uh, what you would like to have on your website, depends on how much you would spend. Me personally, I spent a little over three hundred dollars because I'm I do a little bit of everything. I don't just do clothes. I have my tarot reading, my spiritual practice, my investment practices. So, um, and that's another thing, guys, investments, okay? Um, I have that on my website as well, where you can learn to become an investor and put more money back into your home. All these things that I'm talking about today, guys, is literally on my website, g1insights.org, okay? So, I know I'm a little bit all over the place, but I'm trying to hurry up and get through my list. Okay, so the best places to drop ship products from is eBay, AliExpress, Teespring. I like GoDaddy personally. I've been using GoDaddy for about three years, and it hasn't failed me yet. So, you know, but I understand that Shopify gives you access to other companies that you can drop ship from. So that is why it's a big thumbs up for me. Okay, Amazon Fulfillments by Amazon, okay? That is a model that makes Amazon handle your inventory. So, for example, no matter what you sell, they will deliver your products for you. So, a lot of people might be thinking that they're going to buy the products from you, and they are, but when they get their shipments, it will most likely say Amazon, okay? So, um, just to throw that out there, okay? It's basically running a business. Okay, it's basically running a business with having everyone do the work for you. All you have to do is just sit here, be pretty, <laughs> list your product, and make money. You can literally make about $500 or more a day. When you do Shopify or GoDaddy or um, OfferUp or one of either one of those platforms, right, you can actually have your products spread out through different countries and states, and everybody will be able to purchase um purchase from you from anywhere in the UK, the US, people can purchase from you and you can make a lot of money that way, okay? So guys, that was all basically the information that I have as far as those links to the different apps. I can drop them below in the comments, okay? Or um, under the video tab, I will let you know exactly what it is, okay? But I'm G1 Writer with G1 Insights. If you guys have any questions or um, concerns about